Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're going to be covering the Jameson's Irish Whiskey. Now, I've said at the beginning of the year that I'm going to be covering a lot more Irish whiskies this year, as I'm not really that knowledgeable on the subject. I'm getting more and more into it now, but I can't ignore the Jameson's distillery for much longer, and not intentionally either. It's just been kind of not even lack of opportunity because we can get this basically everywhere. But I took the opportunity when I was in the Dublin airport recently and I picked up a sample set of uh, four whiskies, which included the Jameson's Irish Whiskey Original. It also has the Caskmate Stout Edition, the Black Barrel and the Crested. So I'll go through these at some point, not in order from this day until you know, the next couple of reviews, but eventually this year I'll get around to these. Uh, I also picked up another sample set, but we'll cover that another day. Now, Jameson's, I wager, if you're watching this video, you've heard of Jameson's. It's very unlikely that you won't have heard of Jameson's because they're so, so massive. It's the best-selling Irish whiskey brand in the world, and it's in something like, you know, over 130 countries worldwide. It's pretty, pretty, pretty big. And this is the original version of that, which is something you're going to see in most supermarkets and most bars around the world if you don't see the other ones. It's owned by Irish distillers which are responsible for stuff like uh, the Powers brand and the Redbreast brand. And the Irish distillers are owned by Perna Ricard, who are responsible for such scotches like Abela, Shivers Regal and the Glenlivet, along with a whole host of other kind of premium products and vodkas and, and whatnot. But, you know, let's crack on with this one and see what we've got with it. Now, it's a triple distilled whiskey. That's pretty common in Ireland. There's a couple that aren't doing that uh, and it's of course, unpeated as well, extremely common for um, Irish whiskey. There's only one really, and that's the Connemara that's peated. This one, definitely not peated. It's a 40% whiskey. It'll be chill filtered. It was obviously a no age statement, but you can wager there's probably a high amount of three years and a day whiskey in there. But, you know, let's see what's going on in the glass and we'll find out if it's any good, shall we? Now, I've got some poured out here, being protected by a no nonsense whiskey coin. This one is coin 198, so if you are interested in this coin or any other number in the range, then don't forget to hit the description below and find out from the link which ones are available and how to get hold of them. So, let's have a look on the nose and see what we've got. Now for me, I've left this out for a while and I think that's kind of important. It is one of those whiskies that you can kind of freely pour. You don't have to nose it in a nosing glass, chuck it in a tumbler, just enjoy it. But if you do leave it out on the side, I think it does open up slightly. For me, there's a lot of kind of grassy herbal notes to it. It's a little bit floral as well. Mostly it's kind of honey and cereally maltiness. It's, it's a very young whiskey, but there's bound to be some older stuff in there as well to round it off. But I'll wager the vast majority is that three years in a day. Let's try on the palette. Now it's initially quite thin whiskey, but I think that's to be expected. It's been through a lot, but there's some vanilla notes there. There's some extra honey notes there. And as that's subsiding into a kind of medium-y finish, there's a lot of peppery spiciness going on there as well. It's surprisingly deep for what it is. Mm. I think that's in part because of its um, cask maturity, which is a mixture of ex-bourbon, X sherry and X port, all those th three things are going to get kind of blended together. Talking of blending, this is technically considered a blended Irish whiskey. Now, if you know about your Scotch, you'd probably be forgiven for thinking that that's kind of like a blend of different distilleries. This isn't. It's a blend of grain whiskey made at the distillery, the the, uh, the new Middleton Distillery, and also it's <laughs> the it's blended with single pot still Irish whiskey. A very peculiar term that's kind of only really explained if you do your research, but basically what that means is different from a single malt, because a single malt is one distillery malted barley, and a single pot still whiskey is a mixture of malted and unmalted barley. So they can't get away with calling it a single malt whiskey because there's grain in there, there's malted whiskey in there, and there's unmalted whiskey in there, all kind of mashed in together. Very, very interesting. I think it gives it that kind of extra little dynamic that we sometimes miss out on. But for me, 
you can get this pretty much everywhere. And if you do see it in a bar, for me personally anyway, if it's the only whiskey on the bar, you know, I'll be a little bit disappointed that they don't have a wider range, but I'll still be happy to drink this. There's nothing worse than going into a bar and it only has Jack Daniels when you ask for a whiskey or something like that, you know, something really bog standard. Stuff like this and the Glenfiddich 12 year, I'm happy just to have behind the bar, just something for me to drink when I don't fancy a beer. Generally speaking, I'm happy with this. You know, it's cheap enough, you can get it worldwide, why not give it a go? That we don't get from just kind of mashed together. Don't know where I'm going with that one. Stuff like this and the Glenf the 